Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Brenda, Jim's wife, and we're here today at Jim's log job, his lower landing. Uh, he's getting ready to head into the woods. We've got two teams this afternoon. Jim was in this morning with the Belgians, well, um, but now we've got two teams and uh, gonna go in and get some work done this afternoon. I wanted to show you what he's been up to. This is the wood he's gotten out. He's got a big wide expanse here so he hasn't stacked everything up yet. But um, he's been busy. Um, Andy's come along one afternoon, but Jim and the Belgians have been doing it mostly and uh, we'll follow them into the woods, see what's up. The road has froze up pretty well here. This can be wet, but we've had some cold weather um, the last couple days. Things are freezing up nicely here. A couple things I wanted to talk to you about, update you on. A lot of people have asked about how Buck's doing with his mites. And we're happy to report that he has not had any more scratching or itching. The uh, medication seems to have worked really well. And if you want to take a look at that video, if you missed it, it's in the uh, card above. We're so happy that that's been working for him. It's a little rough spot right there. You can tell this was a real wet, wet spot, but it is hard now. I love it out here. I'm so glad he asked me to come out and film. It is so nice in the woods in the winter. If you're dressed appropriately. And it's just so quiet. I love to see the tracks in the snow and the little frozen brooks. Really nice. So I hope you can enjoy it too with me. Jim's stopped. There's some big clumps of stuff in the road. And he's just stopping to get some of them out. We're expecting snow. So he's just making sure those things get out of the way before the snow comes. Makes it a lot easier and a smoother trail. Here's a little brook scene. Oh, that's so pretty. There's a little bit of running water there. I gotta hurry up. I'm getting behind. Um, so hot. This isn't even a winter jacket, but I have layers underneath and I'm so hot. And I just gotta, I love these boots right here. We got them from our Amish supplier, but they're so great. I love these boots. They're so warm and waterproof and they like fit over your pants. I just love them. I don't know if you can get them from Amazon or not, but if you can, we'll leave it in the link below. We're at the landing. Here we are. We're coming our way again. Getting turned around. A bunch of straddle bits. Pull ahead just a little ways. Andy's going to be doing the hauling this afternoon. So they're just getting the hitch ready to go here. Jim will be doing some cutting. Both of these. If I'm not here, um, I want you to take take 
put this log right here. Okay. And I got marked there. That'll work. Okay. All right, head on out. So there they go. Last time we talked about when Jim was in the woods, I had called him. If you hadn't seen that video, we can put the, the link in for that up above. But I called him. I was trying to get clipper blades for so that Jim could clip the, the manes of everybody. And I got over there, and I found them, not at Tractor Supply, but at Runnings. And then got them home, and lo and behold, one of the blades out of the package was gone so I still got to go back tomorrow and see if I can trade those back in if they'll let me and Jim doesn't even like to show their heads that much when they're because he's very particular about their manes but anyways they need haircuts still I always say people and horses act better after they get a haircut. Just does them good for some reason. <laughs> and so there's a lot to haul down, so that's why Andy can keep going, and Jim will cut down some more trees, and that's why it's nice to have two teams since it's, uh, I think, a half a mile out. This is like a large log right here. I don't see how these animals can pull these things. You know, that's heavy. I've been putting in firewood, and these big chunks are they're just darn heavy. So I got a lot of respect for these animals. I guess he's got some firewood here. I don't think he's gonna get too many saw logs out of that. Okay, so there's the landing where we were. And we're heading up into the woods further. Jim's got a hickory tree up here that's ready to come down. quite a steep little trail but I know people who log are used to these kind of crazy trails our son who lives in Vermont and skids with a with a skitter he goes up some major steep places and it's I don't really like to see where he's logging because it's pretty scary hi Levi And as you can see here, this is a very rocky trail. Uh, the horses are always having to maneuver around the rocks. Makes it difficult, easy to get stuck on things. Just hard to, you know, get around. The, the logs get snagged sometimes. Where is it? I don't even see it. Jim's getting ready for the afternoon of work. This is a little scary.
Oh, here it goes. Wow, that's a rush. I've seen Jim cut lots of trees down, but I don't think he usually lets me stand so close, so to me that was really interesting. There's a little hole down there. Do you think somebody lived down there? No, it's just a snow. Okay. Okay, hi everybody. Um, so, this is a hickory tree. Um, we have some hickory around here. Um, this is northern New York, of course, so this, we call this a hickory, but I think in other parts of the country there's hickory trees that are different than this one. So, um, but anyways, this is a hickory. Extremely dense, heavy, heavy, heavy wood. As you saw when I cut this tree down, I had, I had a very, I was very satisfied with my cut, and, uh, but still, it, these fibers hold so good that I still had to, and this tree was leaning right there too, but I still had to pound the wedges to get this to go over because these fibers are so strong that it just would not let it fall down. But anyways, this is a hickory. Um, it's not a very valuable wood on the um, commercial market. Uh, sometimes very hard to even get rid of. I personally would probably keep this for my sawmill because I have some uses for it. Um, years ago, we had some on this same job, there was some big hickory just like this. And this is a beautiful hickory, by the way. And there was some big hickory on the other side of this property that I cut a whole bunch of it out. And, but anyways, I wanted to talk a little bit today about the history of this log job. Um, this is a piece of property that is owned by my neighbors. And I'm not sure how many acres they have. I think it's three or 400 acres altogether. And, but this particular side, which is quite a ways from the farm, um, is a spot that's very difficult to get into. Um, this was logged way back probably 50 years ago was the last time it was logged. And I've talked to the loggers from back then and they had so much trouble in the swamp, which is down the hill down there, that they actually never got to this side hill where this um, hardwood is. Now this hardwood up in here is actually is actually overgrown hardwood. This stuff should have been actually cut quite a while ago. There are some really nice trees in here, like there's that maple right there, that's a nice maple. But there's so much poor quality stuff, so much damaged stuff. You know, maples like this with a rot in the center. Um, there's just a lot of situations that really aren't that great. Also, like I said, it's actually over mature. So it really should have been cut a while ago, but they never came in here because they can't get to it. And myself with the horses, I can get in here, you know, so much better than they can um, because I can go through the swampy area without a problem. Of course, up here it's not swampy at all. So anyways, it seems like possibly to a lot of people that I'm cutting this very, very heavy. Now I'm not having a, I don't have a say as to what to cut. That we, the owners actually hired a forester to come in here and mark it. And the owners, wanted to cut this really heavy because um, 
it's just so difficult to get a logger in here. So while I'm in here, they want to cut it heavier just to get more value out of the woods. Um, but we're still leaving a lot of good, small growing stuff um, in here. So uh, that is what's going on in this piece of property. Um, we have an awful lot of basswood in here that is really very low value on the commercial market. I will actually saw basically all this uh, basswood up myself. Here's one right here. But uh, um, I have actually been here for a couple winters now and I hope to get this all done. It doesn't seem like a big piece of property left to cut, but because it's marked so heavy and because the trees are pretty good size, it's still gonna take me quite a while to do it and to get this all down to my lower landing, which is a half a mile away. So we will get this uh, hickory cut up and get this out of here. And I will probably stay right up in here and cut some more trees and get off this snowmobile trail, which is right here. I've talked about on other, other videos. I wanted to get this cleaned up before the snowmobiles start coming. And it sounds like we got snow coming in and, and uh, two or three days, it sounds like we got a decent sized snowstorm coming. So I want to get as much of this done as I can away from the snowmobile trail so I don't have to deal with snowmobiles. You have met snowmobilers up here before in other years, right? Yes, I have. And, and it's a real nuisance, nothing about snowmobilers. But if I've got a tree, for example, um, this tree right down here, and so often when I'm cutting, I will cut... I will have hitch onto a hitch and take it part way down and then I'll come back and I'll cut this tree so it's all ready for me when I get back up here. Yeah. Well, if I cut it right across the snowbill trail, if you got a bunch of snowbills <laughs> and sometimes you got eight or ten at a time, they come to my tree, they're stuck. They can't get around it, get around it. So they gotta wait till I get back to get cleaned up. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do for this tree. It is, I think I've marked a 16 footer. And then I think that there is one two wait one two three eight footers and then a pretty good length of firewood i may get a pallet log out of this end but i'm not sure so anyways i go come back and back in here and get my chains on these this piece right here before i cut it and i'll probably cut take down that firewood top and probably i don't know either here or that eight footer there and take that at one piece and then i'll come back and hitch onto the other butt logs um, together and take them out. I got this big stump from a beach I cut before lunch and I don't feel like exerting the energy to, to get that out of the way. So I will show you and try to explain what I will actually do here. Be careful. Ha, 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 kappa ha, kappa ha, kappa, lady step, catch up. Oh my. Ha, 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 ha. Oh. Okay, because of that big beach chunk right in our way. That's exactly, I'm gonna change that. I can get a little closer, I'm gonna change that around. I'm just gonna just stop here, but I can come in. Gee, over here, Bill, gee, 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 gee. Aha, ha, ha, oh, oh. Oh, come out of here, my man. Happy. Ah, yeah. It's hard for oh. me to know where safety is. So I'm going to get the chains on before I cut this. 
Makes it a lot easier. Ladies, ready to roll. I'm keeping this chain quite long because I've had it too, too short. It would pull this log right up on top of that tire. And we don't want that. A little bit, lady. Careful. Oh, bye. Bye. Bye, Blake. Bye. Bye. Oh, that cap's out. Oh. Uh, so when you go in the half a mile, how much of this would you take for a half a mile? The way the trail is right now, there's a lot of frozen mud in the trail and it's a rough trail. Um, there's no, there's no mud left. It's, it's froze solid, but because of the roughness of it and the dirt, frozen dirt, um, being hickory, which is very heavy. I would take this all the way out, just like this. This is this is all I would take. All you would take. Yeah, this is I mean, a if lot. it was if the after a while the trail would get so almost glare ice that I'd actually throw on another 16 footer, or potentially could throw on another 16 footer, and we'd take it out that way. That's a lot. But yeah, right now though the trail is still kind of rough and and uh, frozen dirt, so you can just tell it's really heavy wood. So it is heavy wood. Anyways, now when I take basswood. That's a really a light wood. I really can take a big, big load of that. So we're trying to get down over the rocks and see if Andy's coming on. I can adjust my line too. With these two horses, I am continually changing my lines. When I came in, I adjust it because Bill just wants to go so fast coming in. And then going back out with load, ladies always so fast. So anyways, we've got a situation here. Let me show you what I do in this situation. So we're coming over. This hardwood is, most of it is very, very slippery wood. So, we have so many rocks and it just has the logs go up and down and all over the place. And because of it, when it goes up and down like that, it loosens up and a lot of times, there's times where it will lose my hitch. So because of that, fortunately we caught it in time. And so I will just hitch on again. And what I'm planning on doing is just pulling down just a tiny little ways till these two line up again. And then hitch up and jockey it around so I get them both good and, good and tight. Oh, lady. Right, just a little bit. Oh. Ba. 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 Oh. No. 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 Oh. Oh. She cracks me there, up. There's been a lot of comment over the over time about hitching. Um, having a bus seat on, mostly on my log, on my farming carts, but still. Um, some people actually have bus seats on a logging cart. The problem with that is every time you want to readjust your lines, I mean, problem with that, back, 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 back. Problem with that, every time you want to readjust your chains, you have to get off. Whereas with a bench seat like this, I can stay right on it. That's right. Back. This is new and I didn't see that. Well, I got a new cushion on. 
which I'm really happy with. It's just an old bus seat cushion, and then I get some plastic around it, and it makes it really nice. So Jim's getting ready to hook up a little bit more to this load, and he's going to be on his way out. He has a way that he can get by Andy because he's going to meet Andy in the trail somewhere. So I'm headed out, but I can see here they come. Here comes Percherons. They're going to meet in the road, but that's okay. Jim's got a plan to get out of the way. Not really sure how he does that, but he'll figure it out. Oh. Catch that. Catch that. Oh. I decided to come out with a hitch, so. The next one is, there's a hitch way back that is, it's got a chain already on it. So grab that one for me. Thanks for coming along with us today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we hope to have quite a few more logging videos this winter, and um, we just are glad to share our day with you. Have a great one. I'm not even carrying anything, and I'm getting behind just walking back. These guys are amazing. Can't even see them up there. There they are. They're almost there. I already got them unhooked, and they're... Ready to head back in for another load. Can't even, I'm like, just trying to keep up. I'm breathing hard and I haven't even done anything.